All right, let's go talk to Tataru. She will have something to say to me about when and where the remembrance ceremonies are. all the attention you're getting, Graf. I might have sung your praises a little too loudly, and often, to a few too many people. <clears throat> Next time I'll be sure to hold my tongue, literally if necessary. Anyway, I expect you want to know where and when the remembrance services are taking place. If all goes to plan, Gradania's Grand Company, the Order of the Twin Adder, will hold the first of the three services, and Elder Cienzia Carne Senna will deliver her address at Maquetta's Amphitheatre. I should probably mention at this point that due to the organizational challenges involved in assembling all of the involved parties, it's possible that the order of the services might change. So there's not much we can do about that, so make Gridania your first port of call. Next you'll need to go to Uldar, where Flame General Rabon Aldin will be addressing the masses at the Royal Promenade. Oh, and it's rumored that there's a special to be a special guest! How exciting! Last but not least, you must make your way to the stateroom in Limsala Mensa, where Maelstrom Chief Admiral Merwin Bluffiswin will be giving her address. The room is accessible via the Admiral's Lift. Identify yourself to the sentry, Santaya, and he will admit you. Got all that? Well, off you go then. I hope you find the Remembrance Service is suitably educational. I suggest visiting the city states in my prescribed order, though with the, your record of impeccable timing and luck, the schedule may well change in favor of your preferred travel plans. Farewell! So do them in whatever fucking order you want. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad she apologized for the nightmare. I can just hit return. Nice. Off we go. Like, I love do it in fucking whatever order you want. I think that's... pretty funny. Your impeccable timing. Still taking place at, uh, Heaven's Turn in 2024. Because of house you say. I lost my son to the calamity. Alpha no. The three seed seers are all together. Some say you couldn't take a step without stumbling over a body. Jesus. Kane. It's Kane. Our forebears were once strangers in the Twelves Wood. Fearful of the green wrath, they hid themselves in the dark recesses of the earth. Yet they dreamed of basking in the dappled sunlight of the forest. Through great effort, they proved their worth to the elementals and were granted a place beneath the boughs. So it was that Gridania was born some five centuries ago. Working hand in hand, the Hure and the Elizan settlers sowed the seeds of our civilization, and soon they were joined by folk of all races. So nourished by the waters of unity, and blessed by the light of the matron, Gridania flourished into the great nation it is today. Hey, it's those twins, and they've got weird clothes on. Do you see the Gridanian standard? There, hanging behind the Elder Seed Seer. I sure do, self-assured youth. The entwined serpents represent the unity between Hur and Elizan. An elegant symbol, do you not agree? In accordance with the will of the Elementals, we have embraced a life of peace. Alas, our neighbors have not always sought the same for themselves nor for us. Though we Gridanians have no love for war, we have still less for those who would threaten our way of life. 
ever have we fought to protect the sanctity of the Twelveswood. When the Garlean Empire brought its war of conquest to Eorzea, we rallied under the noble standard of the Twin Adder that we might push back the encroaching darkness. And it was we who prepared the ground for the reformation of the Eorzean Alliance that all the peoples of this realm might stand united against the common threat. Yeah, woo! Five years ago, the Alliance met the armies of the Empire upon the fields of Cartano. It would prove the bloodiest battle in recent memory. Countless Gridanian lives were lost. As Supreme Commander of the Order of the Twin Adder, ever shall I bear the weight of our people's sacrifice. Alas, their loss was not the only tragedy to befall us that day. For soon came the Calamity. <clears throat> the scars borne by our forest are a constant reminder of its violence. Our lives have been irrevocably changed. Each waking hour, a struggle to survive. Driven to desperation, some among us have strayed from the path of righteousness, resorting to banditry, poaching, and other unconscionable deeds. To compound our woes, the Ixul have returned in force, emboldened by our suffering. They test our defenses nigh without cease and prey upon the vulnerable. So beleaguered from within and without, it is of little wonder that our unity now falters. Dark times are upon us. But a uh, cheery speech. Time was a man could a walk on the high bloody roads without fear. On this day, five years ago, countless Eorzeans laid down their lives that we might behold another dawn. Please join with me in honoring their memory. Mm. And how do you propose to honor the memory of those you cannot remember, pray tell? Fuck you, cynical girl! <laughs> the destruction wrought by the Calamity was indiscriminate. It dealt death to Eorzean and Garlean alike. Yet while we have labored <clears throat> to rebuild our homes, to rebuild our lives, the Empire has set about raising steel fortresses here in the Twelveswood. Let none be mistaken. The Garleans remain the greatest threat to our survival. If we are to stand against them, we must remember what it is to be united. The only castrum on... On Gridanian soil is... Orions? Castrum Orions? I think? And it's on the border of Gridania and Alamigo, right? Our many troubles blind us to the woes of our fellow man. Thence is harmony lost. Yet harmony is the founding principle of Gridania. We are gathered here to honor the fallen. There's like one in... There's Castrum... Marinum and Castrum, whatever the one in um, Lenosha is, uh, in the sort of jungly area, the rainforesty area, and then there's the one north of Blue Fog in Thanalan, and also. Castrum, what is it called? Meridianum is also in Thanalan. 
Let them be honored not only in word and thought, but through concerted action. And then there's one in Mordona. I bid you join hands with me once more beneath the Twin Adder standard. And together, let us heal the forest's wounds, that our progeny might live in harmony beneath these ancient boughs. For serenity, purity, and sanctity. We must think of the children. Woods will be done. It's up to us to protect the forest. We must think of the children? This fucking Reverend Lovejoy's wife here? <laughs> God. These are all the pagel with their weird horns. What are you twins doing here? Who are you? If you'll permit me, Alfino. Alfino? Why are you voiced by Yuri Lowenthal? And my sister, Alize, at your service. I saw at a glance that you were a fellow traveler. You might call us students of history, sampling the realm's remembrances in pursuit of enlightenment. Your sister looks kind of pissed off. What's going on with you guys? The Redanians are unfortunate enough to have to contend with two beast tribes. The Ixil are unquestionably the more troublesome, being of a naturally warlike disposition, and won't to summon their bloodthirsty primal Garuda. The Sylphs, by contrast, are peaceful in nature, being mischievous rather than malevolent, and have long been on friendly terms with the Gridanians, until recently at least. Alas, they have grown aloof, a change observed at roughly the time they summoned the primal Ramu. Was Ramu in 1.0? I don't remember. The Redanians have no love for war, and they consider open conflict a last resort. Though they clash with the Ixil ever more regularly, you may be assured that they do so in self-defense. As for the Sylphs, they are as yet bound by a peace treaty though one wonders how long it will be before it's broken. The Twelve's Wood was grievously wounded during the Calamity, leaving Gridania vulnerable to attack. The people are hopeful that restoring the Wood, and thereby the power of the Elementals, will put an end to their woes. Yet how long will that take? Centuries, I'd wager. Meanwhile, the Ixil continue their incursions, spurred on by Garuda and her insatiable appetite for destruction. Whether the Gridanians like it or not, sooner or later it will come to all-out war, and when it does, the Order of the Twin Adder will need all the help it can muster. How valuable might the aid of a capable adventurer prove to them? Well, perhaps we will find out if the Elder Seed Seer's words fell on fertile ground. Alize says nothing. Okay, bye! Who designed your clothes? They look fucking terrible. Alright, let's go to the Royal Promenade in Ulda. And see what Raban has to say. up on husting song. Uh, chamber of rule. Probably the closest. I do not like navigating Ulda. I'll use the ethernet as much as I can. Still, almost like seven years on, I still don't like it. There she is! Well. 
Hello. Strawberry shortcake. In the flesh. Hark you souls of flame, drawn to the bosom of the desert, where the fire burns brightest and shall rage forevermore. Hurrah! Rauban! Where since antiquity, under the sage and judicious rule of the Ul dynasty, we have wrought sand into gold, where by the grace and glory of Naldal have our brave sons and daughters flourished and prospered. I speak of Ulda! There, at the Flame General's back flies the Grand Company's standard. Note the sigil. The golden scales of order balance the jewel of prosperity with the flame of might. Great and many are the gifts our nation has given the realm. In Eorzea's darkest hour, on the killing fields of Cartano, none spent more in blood and gold than we. Thus was the Seventh Imperial Legion laid low. So that's how it happened. How soon history forgets. Uh, shut up. Yet many left our gates never to return. Let us pray for our absent brothers and sisters, that they might know happiness in the great beyond, as Thor's honored guests. Ooh, that geometry is not looking super hot on his shoulder there. You, you, didn't, you didn't tell me that it had to deform like that when I made the model. Oof. If the fates were fair, the price we paid that day would have bought us victory. Alas, they are not. And now, but five years into this seventh umbral era, the spirit of sacrifice which granted us our strength is all but dead. Mm. Look around you. What do you see? A people divided, downtrodden, and enthralled. Where are the merciful alms of the rich? Where is the just steel of the righteous? Not fucking here. I ask you, is this the great nation our brothers and sisters gave their lives to save? You who call this living, dishonor the name of the immortal flames. Wow. It is but a slow death. Our enemies Harsh. surround us. The savage hordes of the Amalja wait beside our roads, strangling the lifelines of trade. Meanwhile, the Garlians make mock of our borders and despoil our land of its natural wealth. We stand on a precipice, yet we do not act, whether trader or soldier, monetarist or royalist. All must recognize that a divided Uldar stands to fall. Victory and fortune walk hand in hand. Ye who seek glory and wealth, look not to what little you can snatch from your neighbor, but to the boundless wealth of the world beyond. Now is the time to unite. Now is the time to ride forth. In the name of the Sultana, I beseech you. Line not your own coffers, but those of the immortal flames. Seek not to prosper from Ulda, but to restore her to prosperity. As the realm prospers, so shall Ulda. As Ulda prospers, so shall her people. Ya for Ulda! Yay! Your grace. Raubon? And the voice acting. <laughs> People of Ulda, I, Nanimo, 17th in the line of Ul, address you. <sighs> Much has been made of the wealth of Ulda. Yet those who measure that wealth in coins and carrots are gravely deceived. For the true wealth of Ulda lies in the health, happiness, and hopes of her people. Beloved subjects, I bid you raise aloft the torch of Ulda, that her flames might serve as a beacon for all Eorzea to see. Long live Nan! 
What's that voice? Into the inferno, for we are by fire reborn. That was a pretty serious speech. Forsooth, the time is now. I believe. I believe. Fancy meeting you again. Oh my God, Alfie. <clears throat> the Uldans have a long history of conflict with the Amalja, the beast tribe that worships the Primal with Freet. Judging by your look of distaste, I take it you have encountered them. Yeah. The Uldans do not shy from confrontation. If all threatens their precious prosperity, they will seek to crush it. So have they dealt with Ifrit thus far, smothering his flames each time he is stoked to life. Yet he is but one of several problems. Though they have been quiet these past five years, the Garleans have not gone away. Meanwhile, refugees continue to arrive in droves, and Uldar has no clear policy on how to deal with them. After all, not even the Sultanate's coffers are bottomless, and even assuming they had the coin, resources will ever be finite. Which brings me back to the subject of Ifrit. It has been observed that the Amalja are summoning him with ever-increasing frequency. Every time they do so, the Uldan send their forces to smite the Primal, and though they invariably succeed, each victory is bought with blood. It is a war of attrition, which they cannot well sustain. Small wonder, then, that the Immortal Flames are eager to recruit more members. As such, at such a desperate hour, an adventurer of your experience would be a most welcome addition to their ranks. I'm out of here. Fuck you guys. I guess we're leaving. Bye. Okay, bye! Femro. To Limsa, then. Uh, oh, I, I can just go up there, can't I? Hey, Xanthael. What up? Need to attend the Remembrance Service. Be quick, the Admiral is due to give her address at any moment. Proceed to the stateroom? Yes! Let's watch some more cutscenes, shall we? The Garleans are another matter altogether. So much for our alliance. It's sunk beyond the seabed. Merle Webb. Brothers and sisters of the sea, hearken unto me. Look upon this, our mighty crimson standard, and tell me your hearts do not swell with pride. A new hand touches the standard. <sighs> Sorry. 700 summers have come and gone since our forefathers first ran aground in this fertile bay. In that time, guided by the mother of oceans, Limsa Lominsa has grown from humble fishing village to uncontested ruler of the five seas and beyond. Did you look as the Admiral bid you? It is a rather stirring standard, I must say. God, shut up! Leave me alone! Fucking weird child. Who dressed you? The crimson field is meant to signify the blood of fallen crewmates, while the black longship represents a pirate vessel. When the Garlean Empire marched upon Eorzea, we assembled beneath the Maelstrom Standard, and our grand company was reborn. 
all answered the call, from the Knights of the Barracuda to Hilthier's bloody executioners. And together, we met our would-be conquerors upon the field of Cartano. That day, the world bore witness to the united strength of Limsa Lominsa. I swear to you, no army ever fought harder or with more courage. Yet many of ours did not survive. Join me now in remembering those who fought in the name of freedom and fell. May their souls be returned to the sea. Freedom. Yes, they have always been rather fond of their freedom. Shut up! Much as the beast tribes have. Fuck you! No Beneath the surface, one would struggle to tell them apart. Fuck off! Sassy child. Who's, whose child is this? It has been five long years since the calamity struck. Five long years of tireless rebuilding. Can you stop following me around? Yet still the wounds of the calamity fester and weep. Ew. But when I stand atop Ugh. the mizzenmast and gaze out upon our battered and broken vessel, I see an undying spirit. Did we not build all this from the wreck of the Galadian all those centuries ago? Shall we not do so again? Yet there are those who would see this ship of ours sink beneath the waves of the restless Rotano. The Sahagin creep ashore, seeking blood for their accursed god. Those fish buck the bastards. The Sahagin have risen? While the mines of Ogomoro spew forth kobolds who push ever south, despoiling our lands as they go. These savage beast tribes will be the first waves to crash against our creaking hull. And behind them swells the grim tide of the Galian Empire. Even now, the Kurs fly their flags within our borders. Doubt not, but that they will be upon us ere long. We are well nigh surrounded. Yet there are those among us who would rather turn their swords against their crewmates than our cannons against our foes. How can we hope to repel our many enemies when mutiny breeds below deck? There is but one course left to us. One bearing that will bring us victory over the Beast Hordes and the Empire both. And see this ship safe to port. We must mend the rift the Calamity has reopened twixt Pirate and Maelstrom. And stand fast with our adventurer brothers against the coming Tempest. Mark ye well. A crew without unity is no crew at all. Tis but a mass of drowned men. Damn. To me, then, brothers and sisters of the sea, gather beneath the undying crimson standard and pledge me your strength, your skill, your wisdom. And with the guidance of the navigator, this great vessel of ours shall ride the waves till sea swallows all. Long live the Admiral! Gather the lads! Yeah. Oh, where's me cutlass? I'll follow ye to the seven. It's her. Linda Lominsa. <laughs> Fancy meeting you again. God, leave me alone! <laughs> Linda Linda Lominsa. Alfie, get out of my fucking face. I don't want to talk to you. You're a little piece of shit. As the Admiral mentioned in her address, Limsa Lominsa is plagued by two beast tribes. The first are the fish-like Sahagin, worshippers of the primal Leviathan. The second are the kobolds, who dwell beneath the earth and take the primal titan for their god. As if the Beast Tribe's presence weren't troublesome enough, the Garleans have also chosen to erect a fortress right in the Lominsons' backyard. And that is to say, not of internal strife. As a nation of pirates, there is no end to the blood feuds between the various factions, 
And while they fight amongst themselves, the Garleans wet their blades and watch. <clears throat> if the Lomensons are to have any hope of withstanding the Empire, they must first resolve their own affairs. Differences must be set aside, and the primal threat dealt with once and for all. To this end, I expect that they will soon take decisive action against the Beast Tribes. Mark my words, the Maelstrom Standard will be drenched a deeper shade of crimson ere long. That a capable adventurer like you would be a valuable addition to their crew is beyond question. You're a pushy little shit, aren't you? Ellie says, but god, I fucking hate this. Why is my fucking stupid brother dragging me around? <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm getting a call. <clears throat> Graf, this is Minfelia. I hope- You are well, I hope. Would I be correct in thinking that the final Remembrance Service has now concluded? A moment ago, you say? What a coincidence! Jesting aside, I trust you remember our guests from the Grand Companies. Well, delighted though we are to have them here at the Waking Sands, it would not do to keep them in suspense any longer than necessary. In short, hurry back. Report to the Waking Sands. Pray return to the Waking Sands. They gotta make it as inconvenient as possible for you to have to go back to. It's very important that to it, it's, it's insanely inconvenient. And there's no ability to just attune to an etherite right there. In we go. Entrance to the Solar. Still having issues. I bet it's like a communication issue. Because the, the app is fine. It's not. Hey, Fanny. Welcome back, Graf. Were the Grand Company's leader's words as illuminating as you had hoped? Aye, each nation is beset with problems. I trust you see now why your services are in such demand. Would that there were more of you, Graf. But you must be tired from your journey. Why don't you rest a while and take a moment to reflect on your decision? Once your mind is made up, pray give the Grand Company officers your answer. Alright. Do I actually get a choice? Oh yeah! This is where, uh... <sighs> The gods only know what grand company our adventurer friend will keep. Hm. The wheels of change are in motion regardless. Brother, are you certain this course is best? Whatever do you mean, dear sister? The so-called remembrance ceremonies were little more than standard waving rallies. As though the Calamity and Seventh Umbral Era warranted scarcely a mention. Oh, the old voices for them are just terrible. Well, of course they were standard waving rallies. Since you are so observant, mayhap you noticed what mention was made of the Warriors of Light? None. I suppose they must have forgotten the heroes who spared Eorzea a fate worse than the Calamity? No, dear Alizé, they haven't forgotten these details. They have elected to omit them. Deep are the wounds the Calamity inflicted upon Eorzea. So deep, in fact, that the realm still bleeds. Needless to say, the Beast Tribes and their primals do little to alleviate the pain. 
So, the task of salving Eorzea's wounds falls to the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, with a little help from our friends, the Grand Companies. Remembrance will yield no remedy. If our world is to heal, we must put the horrors of the Calamity behind us. Our grandfather would never entrust the fate of the realm to despots who rewrite history to their convenience. There must be another way to cure what ails this world, and I need to find it. So she's gonna go off and do her own MSQ with Blackjack and hookers. You are most welcome to try. Our paths may differ, but our destination is the same. In time, I dare say we will see eye to eye. Fuck you! I should hope so. <laughs> My lady, we are to escort you. Hope does not come into it. We share the burden of this fate, dear sister, and will prevail together or not at all. The salve will serve not only to close up our present wounds, but prevent old ones from opening anew. I take it the older Cynthia's words have touched your heart. Have you resolved to entwine your destiny with that of the twin Adder? Yeah. You have chosen wisely, my friend. The elder Cynthia will be overjoyed. That's canon for Graf, and I don't know if switching it does, like, actually changes my affiliation, so bleh. Without further ado, let us speak of practical matters. In order to complete the enrollment procedure, you must report to the Adder's Nest. Company you keep, Twin Adder. Twin Adder recruitment officer seems eager to welcome you to Gridania's Grand Company. I dare say you know it well from your wanderings in New Gridania. Give your name to the personnel officer there and he will guide you through the formalities. I have no doubt that your deeds will bring great honor to our order. Next we meet in Gridania, I shall be proud to call you brother. Da 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 da! Making pretty good progress. Hey, buddy. I'm already a captain. You are coming to the Adder's Nest, headquarters of the Order of the Twin Adder. Ever do we welcome they who would toil in the Elemental's name for the good of our forest nation. My name is Graf Ironchest. I believe you are expecting me. Oh, the great adventurer himself. Yes, our recruitment officer sent word that you were on your way. It is a pleasure and an honor both to welcome you to our ranks, friend. Now, let me gather together the relevant documentation. Sir! What is it? Report. An urgent message from Amaris A. Spire, sir. A high wind Skyways airship is taking fire from Imperial forces in the skies over the East Shroud. The vessel's engines were crippled, sir, and it was forced to make an emergency landing southeast of Nine Ivies. Nine Ivies! Gods, this could not have come at a worse time. All but a handful of our forces are presently afield dealing with the Ixel. Graf, I know full well you have yet to be formally inducted into our ranks, but we have urgent need of your aid. In all likelihood, the airship was bearing civilians, and if the reports are accurate, it will have come down dangerously close to Garlean occupied territory. Please make all haste to the area southeast of Nine Ivies, locate the airship, and ascertain the status of the passengers. You got it! I'm on it! The Hawthorne Hut. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Meow. Hey. Airship crewman. Oh no, there's like Garlean dudes like all over it. Oh shit. Oh jeez. Hey, I know you. Fuck. An adventure? What are you doing out here? No, wait, let's find some cover first. Wow, we must have run really, really hard. Also, our animations were the same. Adder's Nest sent you. How do I know you're not an Imperial spy? You don't even have a uniform. Uh, what if I was in a uniform? Peace, friend. We mean you no harm. You are an engineer of Garland Ironworks, are you not? We were alerted to your plight and have come to rescue you. You look suspicious as shit. You are graphite chest, I presume. I was told to expect an honorary serpent. My thanks for your aid, friend. Okay. <laughs> Convenient. Why do you look like that? Oh, never seen a craft of this design. Must be Garland's work. Is there no end to the man's treachery? Secrets of Magitech belong in Imperial hands. They are not to be squandered on Eorzean savages. Uh oh. We're taking this craft back to the fortress. Dismantle it if you must. And bring the engineer. Someone must pay for Garland's crimes. Ah! Imperial scouts from Castrum's Orions. That means requi they mean to requisition the ship. Wedge! You have to help him. That fool of a Lalafor was hiding inside the tiny Bronco. The tiny Bronco? Isn't that the Ironworks' latest creation? It's the first airship we've built since the Calamity. The first since Master Garland. Well, since he went missing. Tiny Bronco was from what? I feel like it was... It was an airship. Was it four? After years of work, she was finally ready for her first test flight. And she was soaring, she really was, till those bastards blasted her out of the sky. Seven was the tiny Bronco? Really? Hmm, interesting. Attend me all. The Ironworks' latest creation must not fall into Garlean hands. We shall strike them swift and sure and rescue Engineer Wedge. Huh. Graf, I trust we can rely on your support. You got it! May the Midford watch over us, with me. Someone Google that. Yeah, go, go! I got my axe. An ambush, two arms! Let's fuck him up! Fuck him up, fuck him up, fuck him up! Fuck him up! Gotta fuck him up! Fuck you shit. Leave none standing. Keep them away from the airship. Yeah, fucking good luck, idiot. Leg sweep. Fuck you. Uh, what was the tiny Bronco from? It's seven? Interesting. You're not stand against the might of the Empire. This has gone on long enough. Yeah, fuck you. 
What are you whistling for? Oh, fuck you. Imperial Funditor. Oh, Jesus! Annihilate these barbarians, each of the futility of resistance. Get him! I mean, well, that explains why the tiny Bronco sucks. Was it running? The fuck. What? What? What the hell is going on? Fucking stop moving around, you horse's ass. Jesus. Bigs! Bigs! Wedge! You shouldn't have stayed with the, with the ship. And that was a close one! Oh, I'm close. How's she look anyway? Your auxiliary propeller is a dead loss, but I think we can ring enough thrust for the main propeller to get us airborne. A few minor modifications and we should be able to fly the tiny Bronco home. Yeah. While you do your work, we shall keep watch over the perimeter. The enemy may yet be lurking nearby. As for you, Graf, you have more than done your part today. I bid you return to the Adder's Nest and complete your enlistment. I pray there will be no further interruptions. When next we meet, let it be as fellow serpents of the Order. I, um, I just wanted to say sorry, you know, for calling you an Imperial spy and all that. Got that one wrong, didn't I? Ha <laughs> ha, seriously, though. If it hadn't been for you and the twin Adderlads here, we'd be chained up in a dungeon by now. I mean, your debt friend, we both are. Wedge. Oh, thank you. We're, we're very grateful. What an adventure. I gotta go this way. Hey, there's a naked Santa Claus. Tickle panels. Look at that grandpa. Look at him go. Oh, oops. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, man. Graffin does my spirit well to see returned. What arrived but moments ago from the team at Nine Ivies. Lest you worry, the two engineers are safely on their way. The lieutenant informs me that you were instrumental in the mission's success. Had you not found Engineer Biggs when you did and helped us to rout the Garleans, things might have been very different. And all this before you were even inducted into the Order. You are well on your way to carving out a fine career for yourself beneath the Twin Adder standard. But without further ado, let us see to your induction. Twelve willing, there won't be any further interruptions. Woods will be done. The personnel officer stands ready to complete your induction into the ranks. Protocol requires that I apprise you of who we are and what we do, after which I will invite you to swear an oath of your own free will. The Order of the Twin Adder is the Grand Company of Gridania. It brings together the martial, economic, and technological resources of our nation that we might stand strong in times of duress, adversity. Duress? When our very survival hangs in the balance. Our Order was formed in the days before the Calamity, in readiness to fight the Garlean Empire and to combat the Beast Tribes and their primates. Needless to say, our struggle continues to this day. 
Elder Seedseer Kane Sena is the supreme commander of our forces. Under her wise leadership, we protect the people of Gridania and the sanctity of the Twelve. As the entwined serpents that grace our standard, let Forestborn strive as one with the friends from afar to ensure that peace shall ever reign in Gridania. In doing so, we honor the will of the Elementals, and theirs is the will of the Wood. Now then, Graf Iron Chest, I ask that you give unto us your oath of allegiance, in whatever fashion you see fit. Woods will be done. So you know the words of our grand company, that is well. Bound by this common belief, let us strive to preserve all that is good in this great nation. By the power vested in me, I assign you the rank of Serf and Private, Third Class. You are now a man of the Order of the Twin Adder. Go forth, Private Iron Chest, and do that which brings peace to the Twelveswood and honor to our name. Can I get a hat? Can you let me wear the hat? I'd like to wear it. Yay! Woo! Hooray! Yay! Woo! Everybody loves Grandpa. Ring, ring, ring. Can you hear me, Graf? This is Minfelia. I know. An officer of the Order of the Twin Adder contacted me with news of your enlistment. My congratulations, Private Iron Chess. I have no doubt you are eager to make the acquaintance of your new comrades, but I would ask that you pay a visit to your old ones first. Remember, though you are now a servant of Gridania, you are no less a scion. Pray return to the Waking Sands at your earliest convenience. There are some friends here whom I would very much like you to meet. We shall be waiting. The distant call of a friend in need, perhaps. As you are needed elsewhere, I shall not keep you any longer. I would, however, suggest speaking with the High Serpent Commander of Osail Hulwa before you depart. He may provide you with assistance on the journey ahead. You may now accept the quest, My Little Chocobo, by speaking with Vorsail. We we already did it. Delivery missions unlocked. Much much things unlocked. Do -do 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 -do. Off we go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's get there. Nunu Zofu. Sorry, chump. <laughs> Get a chocobo. You're gonna need one. Later, at the Waking Sands. Eden Papalimo! Let me see if I have this right. You're an adventurer who's a scion and a serpent? Golly, how do you keep track of everything? It must be fun pairing up with lots of different people, though. Me? I'm always with Papalimo. Come to think of it, why am I always with Papalimo? Because you're incompetent, Ida. Following the calamity, each nation's armed forces underwent large scale restructuring centered upon its grand company. In Gridania, the Order of the Twin Adder absorbed both the Wood Wailers and the God's Quiver, while the Lermitsons enacted a complete merger of the Maelstrom and the Knights of the Barracuda. Uldars, the Odd Nation Out, having made no notable changes to its armed forces, as before and in the spirit of the Sultanate, each entity retains a certain degree of independence. Welcome back, Graf. Lady Minfilia awaits you within. Yay! 
Welcome back. It seems you wasted no time putting your skills to work. How do I know? Why, the recruitment officer called to regale me with the tale of your heroics. The pride in his voice was palpable. We scions are truly fortunate to have you with us, Graf. Now, when last we spoke, I said that I wanted you to meet some friends, did I not? Well, I neglected to mention that you have already met. Tataru, please show them in. This way, sirs! Hey! It them. Thanks again for getting us out of that mess. We owe you our lives. But I don't think we've properly introduced ourselves. And Biggs. And I, I'm... I'm... Godsman, spit it out, will you? A wedge at your service! I am pleased to say that Biggs and Wedge will be staying with us for a while. Magitech-driven contraptions such as airships grow ever more vital to the city-states of Eorzea. As a neutral party, it was judged that we scions should serve as the keepers of this technology. Of course, for this we needed the knowledge of experts. And so we requested the assistance of Garland Ironworks, who very kindly sent us two of their finest engineers. Our happy family continues to grow. On behalf of the Scions, I bid you welcome to the Waking Sands. Like every soul here, I love Eorzea. And I count myself blessed to have been given this chance to stand with you all and fight for the future of the realm. Never have I known such fulfillment, such happiness. <laughs>